Something I mentioned in a previous Kingdom Hearts video is that one thing I've been doing is going back and looking at some stuff that I had posted over the years about Kingdom Hearts that I either liked the ideas of but felt weren't fully realized videos, or that I just wanted to move over to this channel now that I actually have a channel here on JRPG where I talk more about, you know, RPG games. So if you're watching this on another website, it might just be a segment on Degenerate J. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's gonna be on JRPG. But nevertheless, like I said before, this is kind of a final mix of some of these video ideas. I'm adding in some new things. I'm taking out some old ones. And we're talking today with Alex about Kingdom Hearts. So appreciate you. Hope you enjoy the video. Kingdom Hearts is a very fascinating series to me. It's always been super fun, super in depth. There is a lot of lore and background to this. And so today I have Alex with me from Podcast Now, who I'm happy to have here again on the channel. Uh, he does a lot of content with Kingdom Hearts and other stuff over on his channel, which I urge you to check out. And I have done a full playthrough of the first Kingdom Hearts game on my Let's Play channel, which is linked down below. So this is something that I'm trying to bring back and talk more about because it's, it's actually a franchise I have a huge passion for. Today we're going to be taking a look at whether or not Star Wars should be included in Kingdom Hearts because there is a lot of Star Wars to go over. There is a lot of usable stuff and it does have the makings of the general storyline of Kingdom Hearts as well. So Alex, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. And oh boy, you picked a, a fun topic and a fun uh, collection of games to talk about because it doesn't get more convoluted in a good way. You got to always make sure we say we talk about Kingdom Hearts that uh, this is convoluted, but in the best uh, possible way. Uh, so I'm very excited to talk about this. I honestly want to know what are your thoughts on this because I have my own thoughts of how they could incorporate Star Wars. I also really do think that with the the way Lucasfilm has gone since parting ways with George Lucas uh, and really upsetting a lot of fans and creating a divide where you have prequel fans now and now you have prequel fans that are uh, you know also original trilogy fans and then you have sequel fans that are original trilogy fans but not prequel fans you know there's a big mix in terms of how star wars has been received in recent years i i just kind of wanted to start with do you think kingdom hearts could help mend that wound a little bit or maybe take it in a different direction that got more people interested yeah, so I mean, I, I think with Kingdom Hearts, whenever they do any world, it always, I think, has like a fresh feel to it where, uh, I don't know, you know, they've done so many worlds and, and I know a lot of people just do the main installments, which is fine. And maybe that's probably the best way of going if you don't want to go mentally insane. Uh, I think, you know, because they've done Pirates of the Caribbean, what's what's weird, and I don't, I, you know, I normally try and go for the optimistic side, the negative side would be they don't really do live action. And that's kind of the deal with, you know, we talk about Star Wars and we talk about Marvel on my channel, that it's live action. And they don't really mess around with that very much. But yeah, what you were saying with like the themes and stuff, and even if you don't look at the, I mean, there is light and dark. And in fact, that is that is literally the theme of, King, of Kingdom Hearts, right? There's light, there's darkness, there's the in-between, there's about 500 other things, but that's the whole point to it. Uh, you look at lightsabers, lightsabers are very easy to turn into keyblades or the other way around, right? So the characters there are obviously, I think you would do the originals because I think you would have Darth Vader. I, I don't think you do it with Anakin. I don't think you do it with, you know, whatever. I think you really do it with, with Darth Vader and Luke, or I guess you could do somebody with like a mask is what I'm thinking. So like Kylo and Rey, I guess would work as well. But I think this Really, you know, going into Kingdom Hearts 3, a lot of people thought they were going to do it. I thought it was definitely possible. They didn't. But I think, yeah, themes, uh, like the tones, you could pick, just pick a random world. Pick Endor, pick Mustafar, I mean, pick whatever you want. I think it works really well. Light, dark, uh, you know, lightsabers, even uh, blasters, like long range enemies, right? We've seen that countless times in like Heartless. Stormtroopers could be Heartless, right? I think, honestly, it makes a ton of sense. I think you really could kind of go through these in release date order in a way. So like, for example, if you went through the first original Star Wars trilogy, this is something they haven't done much of in Kingdom Hearts has gone backwards. You almost always, when you revisit a world, it's a progression later in time of like Pirates of the Caribbean is an example. Hey, we met Jack a few years ago. Oh, now we're at the point where it's the end of, um, or the beginning of At World's End, essentially, when yeah. we come back. Uh, you kind of see that as well with I don't know, Mulan, where at the beginning of the world in two, you kind of go in there and it's the beginning of the movie. When you come back, it's later on. It's almost always a progression. But if you were to go in and do the original trilogy, essentially, and have Sora meet Luke and kind of it's Luke is trying to figure out how to be a Jedi 
and Sora encourages him. Then maybe you have a showdown with Vader where, uh, you know, Sora can't do much. <laughs> maybe it gets just clobbered or needs <laughs> Luke's help. And, and obviously they wouldn't kill Vader or anything like that. But you kind of get into this stuff of, well, Vader's someone who gave up his heart, but he's not really a heartless in a way. Maybe something like that. Kind of like kind of like what they got into with Davy Jones in Pirates. Some exceptions like that and how that works and ties into Kingdom Hearts. Looking back at this video in hindsight too, something I wanted to talk about in the modern day that Alex and I didn't mention at the time is the fact that, like Alex had said, this does fit the themes of Kingdom Hearts. Now that is something obviously that we did mention because Alex does talk about, you know, the light and the dark and the dark side and the light side and things like that. It's very obviously set up in a way to play off of it, almost to rhyme like George Lucas said. But something we didn't talk about is how some of these characters actually sort of rhyme with each other in terms of their development, in terms of how they go through character stories and different things like that. Now you can line them up in different ways and obviously they fill different niches, but the fact that Sora is someone who always kind of remained in the light for the more, most part at least, who always strove to remain in the light and tried to hold fast to those principles. You know, he's someone that I would say falls more under the camp of someone like maybe Luke or maybe someone like even Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, he's that light side character, right? But then you also have characters like Riku or even like Terra, who I think they, in their respective games, they both mimic more the I almost Darth Vader or even Kylo Ren type character journey where these they are these characters who fell to the dark, right? Who they flew too close to the sun. They thought they needed the dark for power. And so they kind of tapped into this power that they didn't understand. With Terra, it ended up ruining his life for a very long time, ruining his friends' lives as well, ostracizing him from people he cared about. You know, with Riku, it was something he was able to push away from because I would say he wasn't... He wasn't up against quite as strong of a foe with the Ansem Seeker of Darkness heartless form of Xehanort, uh, but someone who was still powerful. Just, I would say, not as powerful as Master Xehanort. So he was someone who was able to kind of get away from it by reclaiming partial use of his body and then Sora defeating that version of Xehanort, things like that. Nevertheless, he's someone who fell kind of into that dark as well. And this is something I talked to Alex about as well behind the scenes in DMs, and it's something that he actually mentioned too with this, is that you could very easily play off of those themes with these characters and those similarities, like I said, but even having some direct dialogue, Alex came up with something I thought was kind of cool. Like if you had Sora, you know, talking to Luke, and you had this classic trilogy scene where Luke, you know, has found out about his father, right? He's found out maybe post-Empire, hey, my father is Darth Vader, or my father became Darth Vader. You know, what am I gonna do? And you're kind of pushing towards this Luke trying to redeem Vader, right? Just like in Return of the Jedi. And you could have something where Sora looks at him and says something like, you know, I had a friend that was lost to the dark as well and there's always a bit of light. Something like that. You know, I, obviously I'm not a dialogue writer and neither is Alex, and that's just off the top of our head. Uh, you know, he said it very similar to that as well, where it's basically the idea of saying that I had a friend who was lost to the darkness, but he found that light and he came back. I think that's something that could set up Luke for more of a character journey in the Kingdom Hearts world to actually help redeem Vader. You know, you could do something like that where you find these characters who match up with other characters and you kind of, I would say, play them off of those characters' different storylines. Even when you have someone who is just caught in the middle of these different storylines, like Kyrie and Aqua, they were kind of caught in the middle in the way that Padme was. It's obviously different because they're not the lover, but they're caught in the middle of this storyline where with Kyrie, you have Sora and Riku going up against each other and they are sort of those brothers in a way like Obi-Wan and Anakin. One's light and one has become dark. And she's caught in the middle of this, right? Even with Aqua, she's caught in the middle of what's going on with Terra and Xehanort and even Ven, who's sort of a younger brother in that scenario 
with Terra. Or even when you look at something like the clone troopers and you look at what's happened with Roxas and some of the nobodies and Shion and all these different characters who they have their own identity but their identity is based off of another character in a way, like they got their start from someone else. Those questions of identity of who I really am is interesting because you really could look to those and kind of make them rhyme with the future of Kingdom Hearts if you decided to use Star Wars. Now at the same time, I think it's interesting because something I mentioned that I had to cut and that you know we're gonna hop back to Alex here responding to, is I also talked about the fact that I think they've run through a lot, not all, but a lot of the more high profile Disney animation. Something Alex had mentioned earlier was that they don't typically go into live action type stuff for the most part. Obviously they, they did pirates, they've done it before, but it's not something they do often, at least yet. But something I mentioned to him in this original conversation too, was, you know, originally it seemed like they weren't gonna do Pixar either. And then they went to Pixar. And now, you know, it seemed like they weren't ever gonna do live action. And then with Kingdom Hearts 2, they did Pirates of the Caribbean and they brought it back. And the point is that they have gone back on those things before and added to their repertoire in order to have more worlds as long as they fit the story and work. Kingdom Hearts is something that I think fits with Star Wars. I think this is a world that would work. The question is, have they used too many other worlds that they will need to go to live action eventually have they used so many of their classic properties without a ton of ideas on how to follow them up that they would need to? Or are there enough different sequels coming out with more Frozen films, more animation, more Toy Story, a bunch of untapped Toy Stories they haven't touched because they really just did an original story? Is there so much more like that that they really could keep going in that direction? I think that's something that's also interesting to mention in hindsight when looking at this discussion. Like you said, yeah, it's it's a thing where it's not just, you know, you go to Port Port Royal and that's it, or you're in the Pirates world and that's all you can go. No, we can actually start to do different worlds. And yeah, we're not saying like, you're gonna go into 15 worlds. There would be one world per game uh, and maybe you would go back, maybe you would skip a game or so and come back to it. But I really think, like Jay said, you know, you're running out of thing. I mean, Pirates that he could do four, he could do five. I, honestly, I, it, he shouldn't, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does do Pirates 4, Pirates 5 in one of these upcoming games. But a lot of these Pixar or, you know, like the, the older, you know, uh, Disney ones, yeah, they've run, they've run out there, or at least they've run out of good ones, right? I guess you could go back to like Little Mermaid and you could, you could go in the sequels of that, but a lot of those also, they were not good sequels. Any of those original Disney movies that they made sequels for, almost all of them or all of them were trash. So yeah, you are eventually going to run out could definitely line up with the idea that he wants to drop them all together, which again, I do think uh, is on the table there. Uh, but Star Wars is, if they want to swap one out for it, I think that makes sense. I, I want to see it. I want to see it either in a spinoff or in the next. I want I want to see Darth Vader and lightsabers in Kingdom Hearts. I don't think it's hard. I, I, I think it's something that probably should have done uh, been done a while ago. A lot of things should have been done a while ago in Kingdom Hearts, but uh, they're just keeping to the tradition with everything else, I guess. I would love to be able to travel to those worlds and kind of go through the lore of Kingdom Hearts and Star Wars together and just see how that comes alive. Um, so I hope people enjoyed this video. This is something I'd like to do a little more often because I really do have a passion for this video game series. I love it. So I hope that people check out your channel uh, because it's really awesome and you're doing great things over there. Thanks a ton, man. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you jumped. You know, you've been a fan of Kingdom Hearts for a while and I'm happy to see you in there. It's a it's a tough community. It's a community that I, I think, honestly, out of all communities, they know more than 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 us. They're very, very knowledgeable. And then hopefully there's uh, people watching these videos, too. So it's a really uh, it's always a fun time, I think, talking about Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Very passionate fans for good reason. So like I said, Alex's channel is in the description down below and in a pinned comment. I hope you will check that out. I will also include the link to my Let's Play channel where I played through the entire original Kingdom Hearts and Nate and I plan to play through most of the rest of them over time as well. So I hope you'll be checking that out. We're trying to grow, but it's a place for us to hang out, play some games, have fun. I hope you'll check that out too. Uh, links are in the description and pinned comment. Thanks again, Alex, for being here. I really appreciate it and I look forward to working with you again soon. So I thought this was a really fun discussion with Alex. It's a good time talking about Kingdom Hearts. It's always a good time talking about Kingdom Hearts and it's a series I absolutely love. I'm hitting the point where I'm probably going to head over to Wattpad and start doing fanfics because I really wish I could write something for this series but I've really loved what they've done so far. I have my positives, I have my negatives just like Alex does but we plan to talk about this more in the future. 
I appreciate your support. And, you know, to kind of round it all back, I don't ever want this channel, if you're watching this on JRPG on YouTube, to be a dumping ground of old videos. That's why I thought it was important when I'm talking about stuff like this, where I watch this video from a few years ago and I say, I think that there's more conversation that can be had here. I think we can go deeper. I think we can actually get more into the meat of this instead of staying on the surface. That's why I wanted to do kind of like final mixes of some of these videos, similar to what Kingdom Hearts did, where they re-released games and made them better. That's kind of what I wanted to do with this. So I appreciate you joining me for that. I hope you have a fantastic day. Plenty of ways to support the channel. We do also have memberships on my other channels, which are in the description. We also have a channel where we talk more about anime. That's Magical Jill. That's my wife's channel I'm on all the time. Check out Alex's stuff. And we do have our own store, CosmoBunny.shop, where you can use code DJAY123 for 10% off your first purchase. Coasters, keychains, trays, and more. We're trying to make transformative art over there out of repurposed, recycled comic book, manga, magazine, and more paper. This is paper that was unable to be sold, like comic books that were super damaged that couldn't be sold. We take them, we transform that into something new for your home, and we hope you enjoy it. And finally, we also have a Fortnite code you can use to support our channel. Fingers are still crossed on that Sora leak, so who knows? I don't really know if they'd give Sora a gun, if they'd be okay with that, but my fingers are still crossed. DJAY123, also on Fortnite, helps support our channel quite a bit. Appreciate you, have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.